I really showed Buddy Hinton who was the boss. Last time he was making fun of Cindy, I knocked his tooth out. Now he's the one with the lisp. And I became the braided hero. In fact, that night, Alice even made me my favorite, which was pork chops and applesauce, just for sticking up for my sister. But he's not the only bully I took on. Here's Biff Tannen's tooth. He's not gonna be picking on Marty McFly anymore, past, present, or future. And Draco Malfoy, you know, I'll tell you, there's no magic spell that's gonna grow a tooth back, and I know that Hermione isn't gonna help him with it. And Eddie Haskell and Sonny Cartwright, the two of them were picking on the beef for having buck teeth. Now look who's got tooth problems. And you know that Nellie Olson, she's always, she's a girl, and I know I'm not supposed to hit girls, but she had it coming. She's always picking on those Ingalls girls. So, there's Nellie's tooth. But, I'm all done with that. I'm, I'm a lover, not a fighter, and I'm not gonna fight anymore. I'm gonna choose the way of peace. Yep, it's time for brief Peter Pate. It's time for Peter Brady. It's time for him to change. Welcome everybody to Living Figuratively. This is the show that asks the question, why not fill your home with the fascinating faces and figures of people that you don't even know? Why not fill your home with figurative art? Each week I take you to an area of my home my, from my collection or show you my, art of my own, or I go out on the road and show you figurative art and show you how you can love with it, love it and live with it. Today, I'm gonna to drop the uh, Phil Donahue microphone, even though it kinda, of, it's kind of fun to talk into, but it's not real. Today, we have headed up to Willoughby, Ohio, to the Stella's Gallery for the Lakeland May Show Extended View. Last week, we saw the actual Lakeland May Show at Lakeland College, which is the initial area of it. Um, this week, we're looking at the extended view, and here's how that all worked. There were about 500 submissions, and the jurors, Jay and Wadsworth Jarrell, whittled it down to about 150 submissions, all of which came in person, like it was originally online submissions. Then the 150 came in person to, to be judged, you know, for the actual piece at the Lakeland Gallery. Uh, Jay and Wadsworth Jarrell picked about 100 pieces to be in the May, Lakeland May Show Gallery, and then there were about 50 pieces that came here for the extended view. It's basically um, sort of the fantasy show where a lot of jurors will say things like, I could have put together a whole nother wonderful show from the rejections. And Mary Urbis, being the mover and shaker, and uh, she's the gallery director of the Lakeland Show, uh, booked Stella's Gallery to take the, basically the overflow, the extended view. And this show right here has its own little award ceremony too. There wasn't a ceremony, but some of the pieces were awarded and there was a best in show for the extended view too. So without further ado, I'm gonna take you around and we'll focus on the figurative art, but I will walk you all around the whole show because it's a little bit, a little bit smaller. Let's come over here. This one right here, from far away, it looks like a photograph of an emergency vehicle or like a journalistic thing. Um, when you get closer, you see that it's a painting and you see that it's quite painterly and not nearly as detailed as you think it is from far away, which is a very cool effect because what that means is that Michael Pomerantz, who is the artist, used exactly the right colors and the right values to put together that, that scene. This one right here is by Lee Heinen who is a fantastic artist, archived at the Artist Archives of the Wycombe Reserve, and um, you've seen her pieces at the Valley Art Center. This one right here is called Catch Anything, and it's got this just squat solidity to it. It's really just the simple shapes that need to be said without, without really much more. We're gonna pass along right here, some beautiful, beautiful realistic pieces. This one right here by Harriet Mord Ballard, won first place, which is not best in show, but it means, it's actually, I believe, first place in painting. And this is just a lovely abstract. 
in the spirit of Liz Moggins' work, which you saw a couple weeks ago, with the, with the words and sort of the images that evoke complexity to it. So this one's called Space Out. In that, also in that same spirit, this one right here is called Karen P. And I'm not sure who Karen P is, but it's, it's a really cool abstract with a photograph, a historical photograph in it, and quite possibly that was Karen P. And I don't know who, you know, what relation Karen P. was to the artist. But this is a really lovely abstract. Um, Pat Zinmeister Parker does some amazing things with abstract reality where she takes real things, uses them as symbols, puts in words, and then the whole thing has a little bit of a uh, cleverness, cleverness to it. We're going to come around the corner. This piece right here by Cynthia Brewster, who won Best in Show at the um, original May show. This is a sweet little affordable piece that maybe you want to pick up. It's really quite beautiful by the Best in Show winner. I'm not going to ignore this beautiful one here in the corner. Summer Smile by Sherry Harris. It's, it's really gorgeous. I mean, it's, you know, it's very realistic and it just captures, you know, the spirit of childhood, childhood joy. Dave, right here by Kathy Simone, is oversized and it's got that beautiful light the, the from the mesh hat on his forehead and this is a person you've met this person he maybe has come to work for you he maybe is you know selling you something at a store it's this is a person you've met it, it's got that really beautiful human quality to it um best in show right here is also figurative imagine that pieces of herself by juniper may nellis and this this uh, piece, it's actually unique because there is a song associated with this piece. I would love to play it for you, but on my phone right now, we're using it to film. So you'd have to come here yourself and scan the, uh, scan the code, and then you can hear the song that is associated with this beautiful Best in Show piece with the you know, glorious colors and all kinds of symbolism I know is, you know, that can carry you for a long time. Summer's Aura by De Denise Ziganti. It's a really stunning collage with just images of female beauty and power and um, and it just has a positiveness to it. The you know the, the daisies over the heads and she's even got sweet little details like where it wraps around the edge which is just a neat neat way to frame it. Christina Walter this one is appropriately titled 2020, and I think that we can all relate to the various emotions and, you know, things that, things that we all have gone through during this past 2020, the year that's the longest, it's like a two, two year long year. Um, I think this is the first time I've talked about a George Kokar work on living figuratively. This one is called The Demise. Um, and this one is just chock full of political symbolism. My guess is that he created this in the last very few months. Uh, he's got, you know, his, his work, it has this very strong illustrative quality. He was, a, you know, an illustrator and still is an illustrator in the area. Um, he's the one, in case you guys remember this or have ever seen this, there was a, uh, a logo that's on t-shirts and cups and things like that that's Cleveland, you've got to be tough to live here or something like that. George Kokar was the one who, who originally designed that. So he's an icon in the area. And um, this is classic, classic George Kokar. It's super political statement-y, uh, you know, take it for what you, take it for what you will, uh, but it's, you know, beautiful piece. So we'll go into this room, come on over here. This one also is all about Cleveland. It's called The Comeback by Jacquez Jackson. And I believe, I'm not positive, but Jacquez Jackson, this is the same one, the same artist who does the um, mosaics, those beautiful, shapely, large mosaic wall pieces that were in the, uh, in the original May show. 
My thinking is he entered the wall pieces, he also entered his painting. And this one is highly symbolic, you know, all about LeBron James and the whole basketball thing. I'm not gonna pretend like I know the names of anybody else besides LeBron James, but it's a cool, cool piece. Come around for these fun illustrative, illustrative pieces right here in the corner. And then we have this one by Scott Kraniak. And this one is kind of a, um, it's an interesting experience because it looks like he, it's called In a Blood Rainstorm, the Revolutionary Army Confronts a Battalion of Creature. And Scott Kraniak, it looks like he has taken an old print of a Revolutionary War painting um, that maybe he found in an antique store. Maybe it came with the, the frame. Maybe it came with that beautiful, you know, regal looking tassel up there. And then he has gone and doctored it up and added all these comic book um, cutouts that are, have been maybe shinplayed on in a nice, you know, sort of flat, flat way. And then the blood spatters. I'm not sure where those came from. I'm assuming it's different types of paint, but just to use your original print like this with these, with these very controlled spatters and then the, you know, the, the different little things that they say. This is a painting that you can work with, or it's not a painting, it's a uh, mixed media is what it's called, but it's something you can keep going back to and reading a lot of, a lot of things into it. In God's name, Bommies in Laos, Laos, I'm sorry, I pronounced it wrong. Another political statement right here with, you know, talking about the Vietnam, Vietnam War. Um, so forest floor, we've got some smaller, smaller pieces here, right here, Black Arms Gourd Men by Deborah Ducherer. Um, she has one in the other Lakeland May show too, which which is quite amazing and I wasn't able to cover it because it was in the case outside and I couldn't you know cover the whole show. But these are really, really cool. They're just like fun, fun little uh, fun pieces. So we're gonna keep going around. This one right here, group portrait during COVID, is really a pretty interesting way of doing a photograph. It's you know, multiple exposures, I guess, and she's pulled it all together. It's like the whole family is taking selfies of themselves. Um, so that's a very cool, you know, COVID-inspired piece. And we come along to this wall right here. There's a little bit of a Julian Stanzik-inspired piece. And then this one, I particularly love, Red Line Redo by Shandy Schellenberger. It's an encaustic. She's also a quilt maker, and she had pieces in the woman's show. Um, but this one just has like a tiny, beautiful elegance to it that you can put this anywhere, and it is priced to sell. It is just, just beautiful. So that's, think about that one for sure. Let's come on out and take a look at the further along in Stella's gallery. We've got these ones both have a a, a um, I'm gonna say Grandma Moses sort of folk art feel to them. So they really have, you know, just some history and heft, heft to them. Uh, this one, a um, City Chimneys by Nancy, Nancy Mintner, and it also makes a beautiful abstract. Then Sunrise Over the Flats by Deborah Silver. So I've talked about Deb Silver's work before at the Lakeland Woman Show. She's always got second readings, like where when you're far away, you see one thing. When you come close, you see another. Um, this one looks to me like where you might be looking out the window at the flats, which is the Cleveland industrial area down by the Cuyahoga River, for those of you who are not from around here. And there's a cup of coffee right here in front. So it actually has this very personal touch, or at least I see it as a cup of coffee. Maybe it's something else. Maybe I'm seeing a ducky where you're not supposed to see a ducky. But she's framed it in this industrial, rusted kind of frame. And maybe it's not that, but it sure gives the illusion of that. So it's really, really quite amazing. Beautiful photography over here in the corner, also Cleveland related. And now we come to what I think is my favorite section of the 
uh, extended view show. We've got this beautiful sculptural section right here. First one, Eve by Maya Matthews. Um, she had one in the main, main show and then also this one here. And they're both just stunning. And if you're looking to build your sculpture collection, it is so affordably priced, you would be crazy to, to miss out. It's really just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. And Eve, the, na the name says it all. The next one over here, it's called Odette. And this one is, to me, like just this miracle. It's by Joe Pitingolo, made out of driftwood. Driftwood is the wood that floats around in the ocean or in the lake and you find it on the shore and you bring it home and you put it in a pile at home. And most people might lay one piece of driftwood on the counter and, you know, say, oh, I'm decorating with driftwood. Joe Pitangolo has put together this amazing undersea fantasy where, where he's got the... Like, I love how he's painted the green, these holes green. They just look like, you know, the undersea coral and undersea stuff. Like, okay, here's this fish that he's created out of driftwood. So there was like a piece here, and then he's stuck in other pieces of driftwood or something to, like, it's, I don't know my fish, but this, it's just amazing. There's a sea turtle in the back. And then he's got these sort of long tendrils. Like, it's as solid as can be, and yet it flows like it's under the sea. Like you can just see this driftwood is gonna move any second. There's even an eel. Come look at the eel. I just noticed this little eel on the bottom. It makes me feel guilty about eating unagi last night. Not super guilty, but maybe just the tiniest bit guilty. And then there's a, a hermit crab, but like a giant one that's filled in, you know, picked a giant shell. I guess hermit crabs keep leaving their shells when they get too big for them and then find a bigger one. And Joe Pitangolo also did this majestic beauty, this swan, which, you know, it's painted driftwood, and it's amazing. It's like he's, he's honored the naturalness of the driftwood by, by using it this way. So it's not like he just took wood and just carved it and made it what he wanted it to be. He took what it was and made that what, it, what he wanted it to be. I, there's just such a beautiful integrity to how he has worked with the driftwood. So I love those pieces. Speaking of love those pieces, Michael High, perennial favorite of mine, perennial favorite sculpture. This one is called Reliquary of Fate. He has a lot of, he uses the rabbit and the human as um, a lot of symbolism. And a reliquary, those are the things where they, um, they hide and keep forever a, fi a finger of a saint or something or other body parts from, from saints because people like to worship them and stuff. Um, and so it, he's built this little reliquary inside this rabbit's, rabbit's chest. It's, it's amazing. You have to come see it in person because right now there's a lot of light behind it so it's not as bright and uh, articulated as it is in real life because you know the, the light does that. So. Now, we'll, this is kind of the landscape, seascape wall, Beauty by Eva Wolf, Wolf, Eva Wolf. Um, so, you know, she always does these water scenes that are just, just, just right colors. Um, we've got Sunrise at Punderson, which is, you know, beautiful. I've never been to Sunrise at Punderson, but that's pretty darn beautiful. We've got Moving Forward by Sherry Harris. And then this little lovely, this right here, Last Snow, Furnace Run. Um, this one, it's got a lot of texture. It's got the, you know, the snow and then that bluish winter glow, which we're a long way from that right now. Beautiful photography under the, autumns, under the autumn trees. Yesterday on Auburn Road by Rachel Rivas Plata. Um, it's an encaustic on wood. And this one is a lovely beauty too. It's not for sale, unfortunately, but it's really, really a stunner. Jennifer New Year's Cuyahoga River. We've got Tina Yannick's Border. Magnolia. We've got Magical Vista of Photography. And then this big beauty that is framed in a super interesting and creative way. This one is called Underground by Joanna Mitchell. 
and it's a it's mixed media and charcoal pencil. There's different layers, which you kind of have to see in person. And I love how she's clipped it with those ancient art school bulldog clips. I, you know, have have some of those from the art school days. It's really, it's it's textured. It's got you know clouds, but maybe they're not clouds because it's underground. It, it's it's got a lot of you know second second and third readings. And then we have The Seven Gifts by Barbara Martin. And Barbara Martin, you've seen her work too in other, um, in other shows that I've covered. She won first place for this. First place in, I believe, it would have been mixed media maybe. Um, but I love how she's, she's framed it in this very regal, regal way. And uh, the, uh, this bird of peace has got the crown. On its head too so it's really really quite you know very elegant elegant piece so it's quite lovely so let's let's come around and then we got this world right here the great great blue heron by Tracy Zakrayasek and this one is a digital painting which fooled me because I thought it might have been a quilt or a pastel or you know you're looking or a handmade paper assemblage but it's actually a digital so that's kind of amazing. So anyway, thank you all. Thank you all for joining me tonight for the May Show, Lake La May Show Extended View. This show will be here till July 5th. The original May Show will be at the Lakeland College through July 9th. And you can make a North Coast Ohio trip out of it and see both shows one after the other because they're both very close to each other. They're about 10 minutes away from each other. So be sure to put that into your, you know, the rest, the middle of your summer plans. Um, also, join me next week for Living Figuratively when I unveil a never-before-shown piece or triptych from my Goddess Project. You see, if you watch me on um, Instagram, you may have seen some teasers for it, but you've never seen the whole thing. Uh, so next week's episode will be called Living Figuratively, the Godfather Trilogy. Um, also, next week is kind of a special episode because I'm not going to call it the show finale, but it might be the season finale, and I'm going to announce some changes in Living Figuratively format. So, next week will be the last real episode of Living Figuratively. So, be sure to come back next week, same bad time, same bad channel, July 24th, June 24th, um, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Y'all come back now, you hear?